I'm 23 and I'm from Toronto. Going on about five and a half years as a messenger right now, I started right out of high school. The idea of being a messenger really appealed to me because after high school I didn't want to go to university and I wanted a job where I had like a sense of freedom and could be outside and just get paid to ride my bike. My name is Dominic Pollard, I'm from Mississauga, Ontario. I was a messenger for three years. I couldn't get a job at McDonald's or anywhere else so decided to hop on the road. It's stressful at times, and like some parts of it aren't so great, but for the most part it's like I can get up every day and go to work and be really happy about it. Day in the life of the bike messenger is wake up early, um, sit around at home and like do whatever your morning routine is, shower, make breakfast, drink coffee, and then at some point your radio starts yelling at you and tells you to go somewhere, and you get on your bike and you start riding around. And so I'm a guy working in an office, and I've got this stack of paper that I want to send to another guy working in another office. So I call a courier company and I'm like, hey, I've got this thing and this is what it is. This is where it's going. Do a thing. And then the courier company will make an order and their dispatcher will send out the order to a courier and the courier will get it, show up on my phone, this guy, um, and I'll check it and it'll be like, you know, it'll show me the pickup address, the drop-off address. Um, I'll mark the order accepted to show my dispatcher that I've seen it. I'll go to the place, I'll mark it picked up. I'll show up wherever it's going, I'll give it to someone, they'll sign for it, I'll mark it dropped off, put their name into the phone, and then the order goes away, and I get paid for it. And the standard rate for a courier company in Toronto is a 60% commission on the cost of the call. So if I do a call that costs the client $10, I'll get six, the courier company gets four you're basically forced to jump these lights. You're, if you don't want to make that money, then so be it, make 500 bucks a week. If you want to make that $1,400 check at the end of the two weeks, you're gonna to have to break some laws, you're gonna to have to grab some cars, you're gonna to have to do whatever you have to do to make a dollar. I mean, like, I'm qualified to do jobs where I could make more money. That's not the kind of lifestyle I want. I get to go out, I get to spend as much energy as I want riding around all day, and then I can come home and chill out. Most of the packages I deliver are legal documents and stuff going to banks. There's other couriers who will do things. Food delivery is becoming increasingly popular by bike. Um, and there's also, I used to work as a process server where I actually served people legal documents when they were being sued. I use my bike for a lot of exercise, you know, racing. Well, mainly racing, actually. Alley Cat is a bike race in the city that's designed to sim simulate a day of messenger work. So the idea is you get a manifest, which is a piece of paper with a bunch of addresses written on it, and the idea is you figure out a route to those places, and you plan the route, so you try and make it as efficient as possible, do the best time, get everywhere, and get to the end before everyone else. Yeah, I do do Alley Cats, um, top three in Toronto right now. Um, and I'm just going to keep it going for as long as I can. Mayday is uh, it's a big alley cat. It's Toronto's largest alley cat, actually. And people come from all over the world. And it's all about racing. And it's all about raising money for the Bicycle Messenger Emergency Fund, the BMEF. The Bicycle Messenger Emergency Fund 
uh, which is a not-for-profit that helps injured, injured bike messengers across the world, um, is based in Toronto and was started by a, bike, a former bike messenger. Once you know how to ride in any city, it's the same all over. Traffic patterns, cars, drivers, it's pretty much the same across the board. Well, first of all, it's the approach. It's a one-way street, you're going to want to approach as far to the right or to the left as possible to see up the street from where the cars are coming from. And then proceed into the intersection as fast as possible. And just watch out for cars the whole way through. Um, if you have to adjust your trajectory on the way through, so be it. But the best thing to do is take the straightest line through and the easiest line through. I try and find a way to get through everything that doesn't bother anyone. And that's the big advantage of being on a bike. Is you can just not be in anyone's way. Uh, people who hate cyclists, probably hate themselves or something else in their lives a lot. Um, it's like, people yell at me fairly regularly when I'm riding to get out of their way or get off the road or ride on the sidewalk or I don't belong here. And like, sometimes it comes to a screaming match where I pull out my phone and read the driver of the Highway Traffic Act and tell them exactly why I'm allowed to be there. And they call me stupid. I've had my share of accidents and then some. Mm -hmm. um, I've been seriously concussed twice, once while working. Um, I've had all kinds of things happen to me. I've been T-boned by speeding cars a couple times. I've had all sorts of like minor bumps and scrapes and bruises and crashes and wrong decisions that have ended up with me on the hood of a car. Yeah, I crashed pretty hard last year, September 4th, went through the back window of a car, uh, 46 stitches on my arm. That was, that was one of the reasons why I decided to step back and decide to pursue my career in you know, cycling, racing harder. If you see me and I'm moving, trust me and keep doing what you're doing. The only time things go wrong for me are when someone sees me coming and decides to freak the fuck out and stand there and start screaming and act like a deer in headlights. Because I see you walking, I know how fast you're moving, and by the time I'm where you are, you're going to be somewhere else. People stay off the road, that's it, man. Just stay off the road and stay in your office buildings and leave it to the crazy guys, man. Because it takes a certain person to do this job, and if you don't have the brain, it ain't going to happen. And it ain't going to end well.